Hey guys, Sunstreaker was here, and welcome back to another Thursday stream where, yes, as always, we're going to be covering all the important news, going through the newsletter, and ultimately celebrating six years of Transformers Earth War. Six years. It's been absolutely crazy. I can't believe it's been six years, so plan for today is obviously go for the newsletter uh, talk about what's coming this weekend super crazy amazing uh, weekend coming this week guys uh we'll be talking a bit about the, not the history of earth wars but in my history and how i got to where i am now uh, and a look back at youtube my alliances and how things came about uh, some of the bits you might have heard before, some might not, but we'll go through that and talk about my history. Um, and then we're going to be looking at something a bit interesting and put some things to rest. Um, when, you might have seen the video that I posted uh, recently about myself and Tex, where I've rated all the healers in the game. Super, super cool. Love doing that with Tex. And it brought up some interesting questions over the last few um, rating videos we've done. And that is, you know, there's some bots out there that are they're decent bots, they're good bots. And but people are afraid to invest in them because they're too similar to bots we've already had and already leveled. And a big question is is the new content better than the old content? And we're gonna be putting a couple of bots uh, head to head, trying them out and seeing ultimately which one is best and is new content better than old content? That's the big question. But yes, all to come in today's stream. But first of all, let's have a look who we've got in the chat. So we always do this, but I'm going to give uh, five codes out to the first five in the chat. Uh, I was third, but I'm not giving myself a code. Uh, so uh, Stay Puffed uh, was first in the chat. Grind Time was second uh, to my members as well. So a big thank you for you two for being members as well. Uh, Jason Roller was third. Lord Avix was fourth. And Matt Pauly fifth. So congratulations on you five for uh, being the first five in the chat. And uh, when it was rolling as well, I also said we we're so close to 4,000 subs. We were at 3,999 subs. One away. I've been watching it for the last like three hours thinking, just someone subscribe. Just one person subscribe. Let's get it to 4K. I thought I'll put it in the chat. Let's see. Can someone subscribe? Come on. Almost there, guys. Uh, we've also got Chris Harmon in the chat as well. Penny Lancaster, SG Samway, William Wilkinson, Jason Rowley as well. So Rowley Polar's in the house. We've got Lord Avix. Did I say also oh, love Avix already, but sorry. <laughs> uh, who else have we got? We've got William Chowderbury, Escla Hosse, uh, Brew Poli as well. And Brew Poli? Gotta be a relation. Gotta be. Uh, we've got Skippy as well. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing some more giveaways, I think, just to celebrate. Uh, Richard uh, Trinder as well. Uh, Carnage McKite, uh, Brian Leonard, Lena War, my good friend as well, uh, Ultbot Phil, Striker, and it's just scored forwards down. Let's get there again. Uh, Striker 3124, uh, TTV Tried Fall, crazy name. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, we've got JP as well. Thanks for joining, guys. Appreciate everyone tuning in. And Shani523. And uh, I think that is it. Yeah, I think that's everything. So, like I said, as always, we'll go through the newsletter. We'll talk about the event because it's a huge event this weekend, guys. Listen, if, if, if this is the first stream you've tuned in for me and you're like, yeah, I wonder what's happening in Earth World. I'll, I'll see what Waz is up to. You've got to play this weekend, guys. You've got to play this weekend got to and if you're a mild spender and you don't spend a lot this weekend is the weekend guys this weekend is the weekend to spend this weekend is the weekend to play this is the weekend but we'll have a look at the newsletter and we will reveal more whoops that that's up so bowie grand i weep ninny bonk it's anniversary time six years or six and a half years but more about that later uh but yes uh super super cool event so this weekend's event uh we they are giving away a five star combat which is crazy guys they gave away a five star uh crystal last year did uh five star for five years i passed it off said it ain't gonna happen there's no way they're gonna give a five star crystal away and they did and i was blown away i got snarl 
but still, it's a five star. You, know, you can't complain. Um, this year, I'll be honest. Uh, Dale told me quite a while ago they were going to do a five star combat. I was like, oh, cool. And then he's in the chat going, nope, not this year. I was like, has Hyrule put the blockers on it? Has Hyrule be like, not happening. That is not happening. But typical troll Dale uh, was just trolling everyone. And basically, yeah, it's a five star combat. So super pleased. Um, They've got some celebration canisters. It's got four star, three stars, or premium shards. They've got troop XP, combat spark, a G1 gold power core chip, a G1 G metal power core chip, and a partridge in a pear tree. That was a partridge. That was that. Uh, but yeah, super cool event. Normal battle zone. So it's a pretty chilled event, guys. Uh, the five star combat chip is at 115k. If you can't get 3k per player or 5k per player in your alliance, guys, you need to. There's something seriously wrong. For a 5-star combat, this is pull out all the stops. I'm going to be getting on Jacob's account, I think. Putting some points for an alliance. Trying to get him a 5-star combat. It's, it's hardly got any 4-star combats. He either plays the game, but hey, why not? Like I said, let's get on it. But yeah, super, super cool. Uh, 315k completes the event, but the 115k... That's the big one, guys. That's what you've got to reach. The rest is good, but you've got to reach that, guys. 115k, you've got to reach it. So, if you're in a small alliance, not a lot of people, get in Discord, join an alliance, put the feelers out there. There's a thing in Discord where you can advertise your alliance. I remember last year, there was um, someone in there in the, um, I think it was the last day, the Sunday night for me. So, maybe about 10, 11 hours left of the event. Uh, and a guy was in Discord, and he said, hey guys, uh, I'm really struggling, me and my kid are in this alliance, uh, there's only five of us, we're struggling, and literally, I piled in there, everyone's piling in, going, let's get it, let's do it guys, let's get in this five star crystal, and we all piled in, uh, and I think there was like 120 names on this list, it was crazy amount of people that had just jumped in to help this guy and his kid, and he was overjoyed, he was super pleased in the chat, uh, I sort of went to bed and woke up in the morning to the messages and yeah, super pleased. Uh, it's a great event. It's it's really good, guys. Sort of help each other out and get people rewards that wouldn't normally get these rewards and it's really good. Honestly, I, I love these kind of events. Not just because of the prizes, but the fact that everyone sort of jumps in and helps. And I think they should do more of these 300k events. I really do. It's just to go and help people out, you know, in small alliances and sort of network and it, it's, it's a good atmosphere. It's a really good party atmosphere. So yeah. The, in the uh, Celebration Canisters, they've got uh, four star shards, three star shards, and premium shards with an equal amount. 500 four star shards, though, is not, nothing to be snipped at. That's, that's a good amount, 500 five star shards. And even 5,000 prems. 5,000 prem shards, not 5,000 prems. But yeah, 5,000 5, prem shards. That's still good. So, on to the uh, game updates and information. So, so, the combats that are available. So, Dazzle Strike and Giza, Shield Run, Fangatron, Air Raider and Tombot, Rat Trap, Vertebrae, Spore Sport and Aimless. Uh, and then we've got uh, Batch 1, 2 and 3 as well. That is it. So, none of the new combats. I kind of get that. Uh, so, yeah. But, you know, listen, there's 20 to choose from. So, as long as you don't get Fire Drive, you pretty much are alright. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, if you've got Fire Drive, then you're pretty much happy. Let's be honest, there's not many... Uh, oh, maybe dial as well. Oh, and, and maybe smash down and maybe sound barrier and red heat maybe and dazzle strike and. But yeah, there's not a lot of bad ones. You know, there's a few, but you know, you've got a good chance. But uh, yeah, the the point I'm making, though, guys, is, listen, it's a five star combat. We can't complain too much. I'll complain if I pull a poor one, no doubt, which is pretty good odds considering I've got some pretty good combats. But listen, it's a free five star, isn't it? We can't complain too. Uh, but if you do own all the combats, then you do get 5,000 five-star combat shards. So, for my friends like uh, Grind Time and Leader 1, who probably have got most of them, if not all of them already, then yeah, they'll receive 5,000 combat shards, which they can use to then get one of the new ones. So yeah, good luck to them. And then for the anniversary celebration, celebration four times the value on crystals, which is absolutely crazy absolutely crazy guys like uh, when did this I was like no surely sh that's wrong that it can't be four times the value 
they've got that mixed up. Remember when they put this in the uh, last uh, Black Friday and we were like, double value bundles and we got four times value? And we are like, yeah. People were going, yeah, that's right. I was like, this ain't right. This is definitely not right. And I bought quite a few bundles, to be honest with you. Um, I don't really buy that many bundles, but I was like, hey, I'm buying these when they're glitched like this. So absolutely crazy. But uh, four times the value. So if you're looking for... Uh, any of these bots, guys, this is the time to get them. If you're looking for dupes, this is the time to get them. This is the time to get them. So, you know, 2021, Ottawa Optimus, Snapdragon, um, Blur and Runabout, uh, Broadside and Ape Face. So, you know, some good bots in there. You know, Ottawa Optimus and T2 Megatron. Mm, not so good. But, you know, it's a good bundle. Uh, six gun trigger happy, chromium fell back, double dealer, and strafe and thrust. So, again, 2020, not a, not a bad one. I think double dealer's only the donkey in there. Uh, gold fire and remjet, blades and dirge, rook and block, rhinox and tarantulas. If you haven't got any of them bots, guys, that 2019 bundle is crazy good. Crazy good. That Every single one of them bots is a good bot. Great one to go at. 2018, Rodders Prime Motormaster, Leads One and Lugnut. Sentius Magnus, Sentius Malus, Slash and Ripper Snapper. Another great bundle. Really, really good bundle. Not a single donkey in there. That's amazing. Uh, 2017, Cup and Dead End, Lady Optimus, Armada Megs, Snarl and Hunger, and Cheeto and Black Ratnia. Still a pretty good bundle. Uh, wouldn't be too happy with four star now maybe cheeto but uh laser optimus and cup are still really good especially cup for cup lagooning uh and then 2016 which is probably the one i'll go for because wait for it uh star saving Ephesaurus, ultra magnus and galvatron grimlock and razor claw first aid and reflector i'm actually close to getting a dupe ultra magnus so even if i get some three star dupes i'll get a four star ultra magnus so probably pull from that maybe laser optimus as well i can't remember what to do with that but basically as well go and check your shards guys go and check because they're offering four times the value in the shards as well so you can also then you know get a dupe from the character shards you get obviously character shards from three star dupes even so go and look at your watch ones you've got guys go and judge if it's two in one of those batches Go for that one because you're probably much guaranteed to get those dupes. And then if you get four star dupes in the crystals as well, you're getting even more four stars. So absolutely super crazy value. So yeah, really, really good. Uh, and the schedule is that 2021 will be uh, first uh, from 10 till 10. And then um, then from 10, sorry, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Then at 10 p.m., uh, UTC 2016 will kick in, then 10 a.m. 2020. So at 10 a.m. UTC, 10 p.m. UTC, the bundles will change over um, every uh, day. So go and check them out. But yeah, all bundles will contain four times the value of bot shards, spark, and crystals. So crazy, crazy good. They're also doing a massive giveaway in Discord as well. So go and check them out, guys. Go and check out the giveaway uh, section in discord uh crazy crazy good and like i said this is also like I said, just crazy they've also give us some uh, rewards in game which we're going to sort of have a look at today and collect and we'll open the crystals on monday so on monday sort of my crystal opening gameplay sort of days so if you want to see what i get on my crystals you want to see what five star combats i get join me on monday how are you going to see monday's stream Subscribe, guys. That's the best way to see it. And then once you subscribe, little notification just pops up saying, "Hey, what's us live?" And you can go and watch it. Or when I post the video, it'll let you know I post the video. That's all it is. That's all subscribing is, guys. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just letting you know when I've posted and when I'm live. Simple as that. But yeah, super, super cool. Then we've got the ups. Coming characters, Slingshot and Acid Storm. So really good to have some G1 characters finally in the coming into the game. We've had a few meh, characters recently. And uh, really, really good to have these two guys in the game. Slingshot isn't going to be part of Superior, though. No. They have said that. They've announced that. So, you know, there's nothing... I, I doubt Slingshot is going to have something to do with five-star combiners. I doubt it. But to be honest with you, I just think they thought, right, okay... We're running out of cons. We've got Sunstorm. We've got Acid Storm. We've got some Seekers to get in the game. Have we got any Jet counterparts? Well, we haven't put Slingshot in. And they probably thought, well, yeah, but he's part of Superior. And they go, nah, it doesn't matter. Just put him in. 
So, yeah. And then we've got Acid Storm. Super, super cool. Love the look of this guy. Love these two characters. Anything G1, I'm massively up for. And then on the reverse of that, we've got Windstrike. When I saw this, it's very kiddish. It's R.I.D. Robots in Disguise. Not a big fan of R.I.D. I didn't mind Transformers Prime. Beast Wars, not a big fan. Not going to lie, but that's because I was like a teenager and I was more interested in beer and girls. To be honest with you. Um, but yeah, but then Transformers Prime came out a bit later than that when I started getting Transformers again more. But uh, R.I.D. was a bit kiddish for me. Not a big fan. Uh, but yeah. But Windstrike and uh, Bai Baru Bayu, yeah, whatever, yeah, his name, yeah, that guy, yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll have a look at them a bit later on. Uh, we could look at Slingshot and Acid Storm in the uh, in the showroom, but we can't show the abilities yet. They're not set in stone, but we'll talk a bit about it as well. Uh, some cool pictures, as always, from the community. Uh, one from our Grand Galvatron, one of our mods from our uh, Discord. Uh, yes, we are in week two of the four-week saga with an anniversary event. Then we've got a Prime Core Shard event next week. And then new bots and new crystals chance event, I believe. So the apes announced today that uh, it's going to be a chance event. Uh, this bot's looking pretty good. We'll talk about it again a bit later on. Looking pretty good, though. So you want to be doing that event, one and a half mil. Um, but the next event won't be a leaderboard and won't be a chance event. It'll be a new event. Personally, I think it will be something like three or four mil for a five-star bot. I'm guessing. I'm guessing probably four mil. 100k per player. That's what I'm thinking. And I think if they do that, I know that the community will be up in arms saying that's scandalous, but it's a five-star bot, guys. But I think that the reason for doing that is that it's, there's no competition there. Is that what drove the cost up of the, of, uh, of Minerva and Flatline was the competition. Yes, the bot drove it up, but it's more the competition. Where if you just make it a flat, that's the score. You're not competing against someone else. That's what I'm thinking. Listen, I've got no evidence this, guys. I'm just sort of guessing. But they said they didn't want that. They didn't want that burnout from the last leaderboard. And I'm thinking, how can they still give players the five-star bots without undervaluing it, without burnout? And that's probably the, the idea, I think, guys. So, uh, yeah, but we will, uh, we'll see. I could be wrong, like I said. Uh, but they did say it won't be a chance event. It won't be a leaderboard event. What do you guys think? I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, let me know your ideas in the chat. Uh, and then bug fact, big, 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 bug fixes and improvements. Um, so dispatch missions, they said they've lowered the power requirement. I'm going to have a look at this on my account. And I'll, I'll sort of show you what's happened on my account. And it's just bizarre. I, I haven't touched Autobot um, missions for a week. I think now I've not touched it at all. And then uh, next week, uh, Whirl and Sea Phantom are getting fixed. It's, for me, this is a bit crazy. The fact that this bot came out last week and now we're fixing issues. And look at the issues. Like, it's not just, you know, one thing that got missed. Increased damage of the minigun because it's pretty awful. Add the minigun passive to the character's bio. Yeah, that's an oversight. That's fair enough. Uh, fix the flamethrower and acid thrower abilities not reaching the far end of the ability range. How did that get through testing? Fix issues of attack projectiles not firing from the correct gun. Well, that's just an... Again, I kind of get that, that it might be an image thing, so fair enough. Uh, fix an issue with the correct camera not being centered on World's Helicopter Farm. I kind of get that. It's a little bug. It's not a big issue. Uh, fix an issue with World disappearing from the frame during its uh, unblock animation. I don't even know what that is, but okay. Uh, but then fix an issue with Whirl and Sea Phantom shooting sideways using their flamethrowers and acid. You know, there's a lot of problems there with this bot. I start to question why they didn't get proper testing. And, if it, and it kind of did a bit, but wasn't pushed a lot. And are the apes really sort of taking note of that chat? And, you know, they need to. You can't release bots like this, guys. It's so poor. You know, it's substandard. You know, we, we've got to make sure it's at least 90% right when it comes out. I get there might be some bugs in the showroom, but does that affect the gameplay? 
for me, as long as it affects the gameplay, I can I can accept other bugs. You know, art art bugs or you know transformation bugs in the showroom. Yeah, fair enough. That's by the by. But it's got to work in game. It's got to work mechanically. Got to. But yes, they've also announced as well, and I'm going to take a bit of credit for this. I am. I'm sorry. Bumblebee, Hoist, uh, Afterbreaker, and someone else. I can't really remember. But uh, basically, four scouts are getting fixed because I think I broke a video about Bumblebee where he would fire and then he would disengage and go melee. And I did that video a while back. Uh, with the idea to sort of push the apes, say, this this thing is fixing. This is, you know, quite a few bots that are broken. They are. And uh, didn't get any traction. So I messaged uh, Dale a few a couple weeks ago saying, have you seen my video? This really needs addressing. And I said, yeah, I'll bring it up. And then last week, I was like, Dale, this really needs addressing. Because I love my Bumblebee. But every time I got to put my war team, I stop myself and think, but it's a liability. He's going to die because he goes into melee and gets killed by the outpost bots and by the combiners and gets too close. And it's always a liability. So it worries me every time I attack with him. And it's, it's not right. It's not working as intended. I understand, again, these things happen. But it's been a while now where, you know, I think it was last November where I brought it up. And uh, listen, I'll be honest with you. What I'd normally do is if I find a bug, I know I pass it to Dale first because there's a bug here. And I'll give him a chance to sort of fix it. But if it leaves it a month or so, a month or so, I don't get fixed, then I'm going to do a broken video to try and sort of push it and get it out there. That Listen, guys, if you're using this bot, it's not working right. It's not working as intended. Be careful. Be wary of it. So, yeah, listen, I'm finally happy that they're really fixing it. I'm super pleased. Yeah. So let's have a look in the chat, see what all the chat is about while I've been waffling on. And we're drinking, drinking some uh, Roca Roller. No product placements in my stream. Some Roca Roller. So, yeah. So, yeah, a bit of a. Yeah. Dale the Troll. Yeah, well, Silver put. So, maybe they'll assume that they'll rotate them now where uh, 5 star next year in a combat and a 5 star in a combat. Maybe. Maybe. Who's to know? GP's put a six star bot next year. No. They've said that um uh they won't be doing six star bots. But there is gonna be a way to upgrade our current five star, which I'm interested about. And they've also said there'll be something to use prime core shards for. Well they're using five prime cores to upgrade five stars. Maybe, maybe. They then prime core shards. You heard it here, guys. I said this about three months ago. Save your prime core shards. As soon as the apes say, listen, we're going to introduce something where you're going to have a use for this. It's probably going to be something top-end content-wise or something new where people are going to need it. So get saving now. Um... <laughs> Victory Star Savers, but time to whale this week. Yeah, this is the week to do it, guys. Honestly. Um, what else? TTV Triforce asked, "Is uh, can someone help me and my mum and little bro with Alliance mission, please?" Um, with this weekend, uh, TTV. If you go into Discord and join the Transformers Earth World official server, there's a section there where you can advertise your uh, alliance. I would recommend you go in there. I really would. But I'll just say this, though, guys. Be wary that you're gonna have to put some points up yourself because. There was one alliance last year where I thought I'll jump in and help out. And I jumped in. And there was about 20 guys in there. All quite low level. You can tell by the medals. And literally half of them are not even played. And so I just left. I thought, no, I've got somewhere else. Because that's not fair. You know, you, I'm not going to help you get a 5 star crystal when you're putting 0 points or less than 1k. You've got to put that effort in yourself. So if people jump in and you're making an effort, they're going to help you. But if you're doing 500 or 1000 points and they're like, come and help me. People are going to be a bit reluctant. So keep that in mind, guys. Um, oh, yes, JP. Another crystal cracking vid. But, yeah, we'll try and keep them out of Thursdays. Thursdays to inf more inf informative stream. Uh, Monday's more just a bit of entertainment. So, yeah. 
Uh, JP's S1 Shrag a bot bot. A bot bot? A bot bot? A bot bot. Uh, no, he's a combat bot, which we'll have a look later. Um, wasn't Windstrike in Rescue Bot Academy? Not a clue. Jason Rollins asked, there's only another two strike seekers left. Uh, I know there's Sunstorm. Is there any more seekers left, guys? Put it in the chat. I'm not too sure. Definitely Sunstorm. Definitely. I think there's more than that. There's so many seekers. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Honestly, Hasbro love to use that mold. They really do. Uh, William Walker says, put, put Slingshot in for Power Glide as Superior's weapon. Yeah, but the problem then is, if you've, if you've got Power Glide, you've got Four Star Superior. If you can put Slingshot in, and you haven't got Slingshot, do you lose Superior? You know, it, it gets a bit crazy, so best not. Um, yeah, written loud. I'm surprised that Slingshot's in uh, Air Force as well. I'm not going to lie. Um, grind Time's put... Yeah, the leaderboard aspect of the new... Yeah, but the problem with that Grind Time, if it's just a race in that sense, then that's a bit unfair to maybe those that are in a different time frame, depending on the score you put up. But, uh, you know, those that are in, I'll be honest with you, like, the event starts at 11am for me, so that's quite good in a way. Um, I think it starts in a, around America at like about 3 in the morning. So as you go back that way to maybe the other coast, it, it could be like 1 in the morning when the event starts. And as you go the other way, uh, even later in the day, so they'll finish work maybe over uh, towards... Uh, maybe Asia and that way they'll probably be finishing work when the event starts so it's even easier for them I suppose so we've got to be careful in that sense that we're not sort of uh, alienating some players I suppose <laughs> just as he was putting nose core in the corner crying yes well the apes have confirmed pretty much that Minerva and Flatline SG uh, Thundercracker uh, and I forgot his counterpart but the other guy um they'll all be in the next five star batch along with let's be honest six gun and trigger happy i probably win the five star five star uh but um voting poll and we'll have them three in the next ability but they have said that the other two won't be that good why are you mad why not you've got some great batches out there the previous batch wasn't that good let's be honest it was all right it's not it's not amazing it's not awful it's not the worst batch i wouldn't say but you know it's not amazing why put two awful bots in there that's ridiculous put it if they mean it's going to be two poor bots that are going to get upgraded then fair enough because they usually end up being some of the better ones but please don't make it two awful bots don't put poor bots in a batch that just makes no sense at all Um, let's have a look. Oops, oh, catch up with chat. Scroll down, let's have a look at it. Yep, hoist is getting fixed finally. Yay, hey, caffeine. Well, no, it's zero. So, oh no, it's still caffeine. It's still, yeah, it's zero sugar. So, yeah, it's still caffeine. Um, SG Soundways put what five star combat do you want? Was it from the event? Um, we'll take a look when I go on my main account. We'll have a look later. We'll, we'll, oh, I'll update you on what I've been hoarding and how I'm up to. I mean, most people that watch my stream will know by now where I'm up to. We'll have an update on that. Uh, we'll go through what I've been doing this week and, yeah, everything else. Uh, Leader 1 would be nice to have something else to spend 5-star shards on. Well, they need to have more batches. They need to bring them up more often. They're giving out more 5-star shards. We need more 5-star batches. I, I wouldn't like to guess when... The last batch came out. Was it last November? Was it? Someone will correct me. Someone will know. But I think it was last November. That's like eight months. Was it January? I could be wrong. But it's at least six months. We need to. JP, preach no leech. <laughs> yes, I do like that saying. I like that. <laughs> Let's have a look. What else? Uh, yeah, they're not, Victor Star said, but they're not going to add slingshots to Superior. They're not. They've already said they're not. Definitely not. Yeah. As she sandwich put the fact they say the last two bots won't be very good is very, very bad. Yeah, 
I agree. Yeah, but Silbot put, yeah, but dust up a power glide or slug and pyro incoming. Yeah, but they'll become good bots, hopefully. If they put him in the batch, they become amazing. So, yeah. Leader One's put, yeah, December the 16th was the last batch. So, yeah. <laughs> Grant says, but watch the other two bots be awful ones like Ultra Magnus and Sunstreaker. Oh, wait. I got, yeah. Yeah, but they, oh, don't forget, they've fixed Ultra Magnus. Don't forget that. They've fixed Ultra Magnus. They balanced him. But he is unbalanced. I don't understand what they were saying in today's stream that they can't give Galvatron and Ultra Magnus' ability to each other because Ultra Magnus fires rockets and Galvatron fires a beam. But you can still give them something. You can still. Don't change animation. Just make the damage do what it should do. I don't want to go on a rant again about this. We've already covered it. If you want to check it out, go and check out the previous stream. I need to make it in a video, actually. That's a good point. Um, but, you know. No. Just just make sure. Just All they have to do for me is make sure the bot does what it states. That's, that's the number one thing. That's the number one priority. Okay, cool. Let's go and test the count and let's see where what we're doing on there today then. So this is our test account. So for those that are new to the uh, stream, no, I don't have four million coins on my main account. I've got about four k. You know, I don't have four million coins. It's a test account, and as always, Q grind time. Test server disclaimer. This is a test server account given to me by Spaceshape to be able to exclusively show new features. This is in no way connected to global, and all values are given to me by Spaceshape for testing purposes. To have access to a test account, you must be a playtester or content creator, and to become a playtester or content creator, you must apply when applications are being taken. No, I am not a hacker, and this is not my normal global account. This has been your test server disclaimer. And uh, thank you, Grand Time, for the disclaimer. So, yes. Oh, and thank you, uh, Arrow FL uh, Bozo, for the uh, donation to the stream. Thank you very much. $20. Much appreciate. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Whew, I was trying to get out of the way before I sort of talked. Excuse me. But yeah, thank you, uh, ROFL uh, Bozo, or Rollover Laughing Bozo. I appreciate the donation, but I honestly really do. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, thank you to everyone donating, everyone that's a member, and you know, everyone that sort of you know chips in in some way. And uh, yeah, it's really appreciated. So yeah let's have a look so what we're we going to do on the test server so let's have a look at the new combat first let's add a bit of music on a bit of background anyway cool okay where are we looking i've, I've had to jig it around i did a whole new design and then i had to jig it around just for uh testing purposes uh ttv has said he's only playing the game for a week oh god that's the exciting times when you first start off. Oh my days. You, you first start off in the week and everything's that easy. And then you build it up. And then, um, yeah, it soon gets hard. It does. But like any game, really. You know, the further you go, the longer things take and the harder it is to progress. But those early days are the best. It really is. Um, new combat wind strike. So... These values are not set. We've still got another week. Uh, I'll explain what might change, maybe. But, um, yeah. So, wind strike. Every 15 seconds, this is obviously a max 5-star. Launch a long-range tornado, dealing 100% of the bot's DPS to everything in its path. And increase bot damage by 32%. The 32%, guys, is crazy. Absolutely crazy, honestly. Like the DPS that increases by silly, it really is. The every 15 seconds launch a tornado, it's a bit underwhelming. You'll see that it's only 100% of the bot's DPS and can all be equipped to uh, sort of melee bots, tanks. So they don't have a lot of DPS anyway. So I'm a bit on the fence in terms of the bot's DPS part. But the bot damage is crazy when you add it to a bot that's got amazing DPS and health. So, to give you an idea. So, let's just uh, unequip a minute. So, equip this. So, this is to give you an idea on who you can uh, 
give the bot two. So, Laser Optimus, Rhinox, Blast Tech, Lead to One, Sludge Rook, Slash, Osmagnus, Goldfire, Snarl. No, to give you an idea. Uh, Rodimus Prime, Streetwise, and Skylink's bots like that. So, the interesting ones are not the likes of Blaster and not the likes of Rook. The interesting ones are the likes of No, the likes of Slash that have crazy damage anyway. So, to give you an idea, I put mine on my Slash, and it's not really suited for Slash, to be honest, because it doesn't increase ability damage. But it does increase Slash's DPS. So, when you've got a maxed out 5 star Slash, and you had Wind Strike all of a sudden. 988 DPS. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Ridiculous. I mean, yes, that is with the Titan buffs and things like that as well. But absolutely crazy. Let's add it on to someone else. Who's got who's this interesting? Laser Optimus. So prior. 633 DPS. Don't forget, it doesn't affect ability, guys. Remember that. Put it on Laser Optimus. 633 DPS becomes... 836 DPS for a tank. With 34k health. That is... Unknown. 34k health tank with 836 DPS. That's pretty much gonna DPS for a tank. <laughs> That's crazy, absolutely crazy. I wish I had my Gnaw uh, loaded up. I really did. I think I've got four star Gnaw. <coughs> to give you an idea. So, four star Gnaw is level 60. So, his DPS is 575. Only at level 60. I mean, it won't even be that impressive. But still. I think next week we need to max out a 5 star no and put it on and see what stupid DPS it's got. 759 for a 4 star. Uh, can you compare to Jets? Matt Paul has asked. No. Because it's, it's a bit like Lion Eyes. It doesn't increase the range of anything like that. It simply just uh, adds a tornado and increases spots DPS. The tor like I said, we'll, we'll show it in, uh, in action anyway. So, uh, take it off no. And we will put it on. I'm trying to think of a bot that's got high DPS anyway, but we'll put it, yeah, we'll put it on. Um, we'll put it on slash just to show. Let's have a gander. Beast trial. Put uh, slash in there. Uh, yeah, jets can easily go over 1k. Likes of swoop, things like that. I've got crazy DPS. Uh, so yeah, some bots can go. I imagine no I might actually go over 1k uh, with a uh, wind strike. One shall stand. One. Grand Tides, but is this new combat the best one for tanks? Maybe. We'll talk a bit about that in a minute. So here's uh, Slash. So if you watch carefully, there is the uh, the uh, windmill. Well, not windmill, the uh, whirlwind. Uh, it is a bit bugged. The animation's not quite right, but they are going to finish it off. But you can see the sort of range is sort of a, a bit the same as uh, Top Heavy in a way. So the animation isn't quite right, but it will be. And my take on the windmill is, is pretty much the same as Top Heavy. In that, you know, you can see there, it's gone the opposite way. You can't control where it goes. So sometimes it's sort of wasted. It sort of goes off on a tangent, doesn't really hit anything. So, or just one or two things. So, not amazing. The windmill part is alright. The big one for me is the increase in DPS. That's absolutely crazy. Don't forget, this is a 5-star maxed out as well, guys. So, the windmill is doing 100% of the bot's DPS, which is like 900 damage in terms of slash, um, which is all right. It's not awful, but it's not going to make a huge difference. See, William Wilkinson's put, you could solo a big base without DPS. So the problem is, like I said, it doesn't affect abilities. 
So when Slash is doing an ability like this, it's not affected by a wind strike at all. So looking at it from that sort of sense, then yeah, it's not that great. Yeah, Grand Town's left at me putting windmill. <laughs> Reap the windmill. <laughs> Let's have a look at him in the showroom, though. Let's have a look at him. There's Slash. There he is. Like I said, a bit, bit kiddie-ish for me, that's all. It doesn't, just doesn't fit in. I just don't think it just, just looks well in the suit. she got, like, you know, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of the look of it. But, yeah. <laughs> Matt Paul has asked if it's a tornado and equipped an or. Does that make it a Sharknado? No. Now, if you put your Nor minions down and the tornado sort of moved them with it, now that would be a that would be a Sharknado. That would be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, no, sadly not. So the combat, I'm hoping they change the DPS. Personally, I would like it a bit more. Uh, I think it's gonna stay as it is. I'll be honest with you. I think so. Um, I think the DPS is great, but. Yeah, that is a five star max. To give you an idea, the four star, four star, level eight gives a 20, 18% increase at level uh, eight, uh, going up to like 20, 22. So, not bad. That's not awful, but it's not amazing like the five star. Uh, and the three star um, will. I haven't got it. So, yeah. But the interesting thing, though, guys, is that the four star. The tornado is 100% of your bot's DPS. The five star is 100% of your bot's DPS. The three star, you probably guessed it by now, is 100% of your bot's DPS. The only thing that changes is it increases your bot's damage for the star rating. So if you're only concerned about the tornado part, at the minute, the way it is, doesn't matter if it's five star, four star, three star, two star, it'll give your bot 100% of their DPS in a, in a windmill. In a windmill. So yeah, um not sure if it'll stay like that, like I said, because of that reason. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh we'll visit again next week, uh if it changes. But uh yeah, looking alright. I wouldn't say it's awful, wouldn't say it's amazing, wouldn't say it's groundbreaking, but it could be interesting on some tanks, but I would not put it on a tank that's got high health and low DPS. So I would not put it on the likes of Rook. You know, if you look at Rook, um 344 DPS, so if you take that off Rook and put a uh, wind strike, wind strike on either, then you're not getting the full value because what happens there is that it increased Rook's DPS to 455. That's not that big an increase, really. And the whirlwind will only be either 300 or 400 DPS. So putting wind strike on an actual tank. So I know. You've got warriors and special bots, but when I say a tank, I'm talking high health, low DPS. Strictly that. So, if you're going to put it on that, you're not going to get much use out of it. You've got to put it on a bot that's a special bot that's got a high, that's melee, that's got a high DPS. So, likes of No. This is a great, unbelievable um, combat for No. And probably very well made. An upgrade from Lion Eyes, without a doubt. An amazing increase in DPS. So, would I like this guy? If I had no, this is the combat I would be chasing for no. This is the guy I would be chasing without a doubt. If I don't have no, maybe not. Maybe not. Because it only increases DPS, don't forget. It doesn't increase ability. So, it could be uh, interesting. It is. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the new bots in the showroom as well. So we've got Slingshot and Acid Storm. Let's have a look at them. So there is Slingshot. So yes, they're obviously Air Class. And Air Class, you can pretty much guarantee what they're going to do. They're probably going to be a one-shot bot in some way. But this bot's got something a bit different to it. And I can't go into detail. Like I said, it's still in testing, but it's early days. But it's got two parts of its ability. And the first part, that's pretty decent. It's quite clever, actually. I, I like it. I really do like it. And I think it's well thought out. The only thing is, after that, then, it's a one-shot. So when you think about this, like, 
SG uh, Thundercracker and SG uh, Jetfire. So, the first part of the ability wasn't that good, really. The, the things are circling around. It wasn't that good. Then it's just a one-shot, so it doesn't really work. So, they've gone to sort of like, not them extreme. It's not going to be like that sort of powerful. But they've gone to where it's got two parts of the ability. One that will have a good effect that you can combo. We're going to be seeing quite a bit of this, guys. Where it gives something an ability that you can combo. And I honestly think this guy could be a prime league bot. I really do think that. The way it's going. I'm quite impressed with the first part of the ability. And I'm hoping that it stays like that. Because it's quite impressive. Um, and then it's just a one shot after that. But I, I can find a use for it already. I, I'm thinking of if I get this bot. I'll, I've got a great use for this. But currently I'm looking for a bot that can take out build bots and one shot that's not an aerial bot because you've seen a lot of anti-air at the minute so aerial bots have sort of took a bit of a back seat so for me if the bot if the base got anti-air and it's got anti-stun i'm pretty stuck i use bumblebee laser optimus and sea spray in my team quite a bit all stun i use blades jetfire tracks all air that's six bots that i can't really use if you have anti-air and anti-stun you know, so you can use them, but obviously they get taken out pretty quickly. So uh, I find that I'm using them bots less and less and trying other things instead. So I need to sort of start picking my other bots. SG's Jetfire Thundercracker will probably help me out because it'll probably distract them anti air. So I take it back. It might actually be pretty good, the five star, and actually help me out in that situation to be a one shot jet. Uh, well, it's an upgrade from Jetfire. Um, we'll shot, one shot the MDS. Um, but it'll have his uses maybe, but it is quite costly. So. But yeah, again, that's yet to be seen. Minerva's going to be great in that batch. Six gun will be as well. So it uh, depends on six guns rage if we can reach the billbox and things like that. But yeah, going to be interesting. And let's have a look at Acid Storm as well. And there's Acid Storm. Super, super cool. And like I said, uh, any G1 bots coming to the game, I am all for. And uh, can't wait for his uh, ability. Yeah. Penn Lancaster's put, what about Ultra Magnus? What about Ultra Magnus? You mean the fact that he doesn't do his stated damage? Is that what you mean? Well, yeah. Transform them. Oh, of course, grind time. Apologies. Yeah, of course. I should transform them, shouldn't I? Of course, I should. Silly me. I'm not I'm not concerned that I don't show their stats or anything that I'm just really cautious. But yeah. Super super cool. I love the seekers. Yeah. It's a bit like the Cybertron Jetfire. Uh sorry, Cybertron Star Scream, obviously. But yeah, super super cool. Yep. Loving that. And uh, I've even worked out how to zoom in. Look. Whoop, 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 whoop. Cool. I like that. And then let's have a look at, uh, obviously, Slingshot. Where is Slingshot? Where is Slingshot? Where is Slingshot? Where is Slingshot? There is Slingshot. Whoop. There we go. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> JP's put, need the Earth mode. Yeah, that would be better. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but uh, still pretty cool. This is not like the G1 uh, slingshot though. Uh, the legs, I'm pretty sure they didn't stick out like that on the G1, but I could be wrong. I had this guy as a kid actually. Um, I had uh, him on skydive. Um, yeah, as a kid. So yeah. And Silver Bolt. I only have three of them. But yeah. Can we put slingshot looks like, was a. This guy's got sunglasses on, eh? You mean he's got a bald head? <laughs> Are you saying I've got a bald head and orange face? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> but yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do a bit of testing. So, you've probably seen it early, but we're going to do a, bit, a few bots in the testing. So, we're going to have a look at some of these bots. So, the big question is, if you were starting the game this week... Uh, you know, you just started the game, you know, fairly recently. 
uh, as we saw uh, from TTV uh, earlier. Who would you upgrade? Beast Wars, Prowl, and Cheeto. Who would you upgrade? Tiger Hawk or Swoop? Jetfire or Storm Clash? Which one of these would you upgrade? If you... Let's take five stars out of the equation because it makes it a bit unfair. But let's imagine that there was a, four, a five star Beast Wars Prowl coming out and you had a choice between a guaranteed Cheeto or a guaranteed Beast Wars Prowl as a five star. You know, who would you choose? If you had a guaranteed Swoop, you can get a guaranteed Tiger Hawk. Same for Jetfire, if you got a five star Jetfire or a guaranteed five star Storm Clash, you know, who would you choose? You know, and that's a big question. So I thought we'd sort of look at it today and sort of judge, like, you know, on uh, which I would level. If I was starting today, starting an account up and had a choice between these guys, who would I level? So let's have a look at it. Grand Tides, but whoever does more damage. Well, that's not really true, I'll be honest with you. It's kind of not. So we've got Beast Wars Prowl at maxed out uh, ability 10. We've got Cheeto at ability 10. So let's put them both down here. And see how quick they get through these. So Cheeto just slightly behind, don't forget. See, Cheeto is definitely faster there. Definitely faster. So let's see who can get through fastest there. Let's have a look. Uh, no, let's not because Cheetos running around. <laughs> let's try again. Let's move this out of the way a minute. Let's ruin my base design. Absolutely ruin it. Oh, actually, we can do this, can't we? Oh, uh, do that. Yeah, do think of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, do that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, do that. Cool. Let's try him now. So yeah, Cheeto does more damage. JP, but somebody messed up. Yeah, the apes did making him path round like that. Who does that? Why would someone run around and go through the wall backwards rather than going through there? But hey, that's pathing for you. Okay. Beast Wars Pro. Cheeto. We're going to try and do his fair. I'm going to put Cheeto down first, actually, because Cheeto can go through walls as fast. So let's go like that. Let's go like that. Yep, so Cheeto's just going to head first. I can see there, Beast Wars Prowl has got through that super, super easy. Abilities. And in that instance, let's get through that wall there. See who gets through the wall fastest. Beast Wars Prowl is smashing through them walls. And a bit of AOE damage as well. So the big question is, who would I level? Beast Wars, Prowl, and Cheeto. So they've all got they've both got advantages in some way. Yes, Cheeto does more damage, but Beast Wars Prowl gets through walls. But you've got to ask yourself, what are we going to be using these bots for? What do we use these bots for mostly? The most used way of these two is to take out outposts and combiners, not walls. So although Beast Wars Prowl does great against walls. We're not going to use it for that. You know, we've got better bots that do better jobs at getting through walls. If walls are that much of a problem, use a bot that will take out that wall. Use Sludge or use, God forbid, Nose Cone. But, you know, there's bots out there that will deal with walls better. And for me, Cheeto does what he does best and he does it well. He does a lot of damage very quickly. Yeah, it's a bit squishy with his health and things like that. But we've got, we've got cores that can sort of combat that and help him with that. But he does what he does very well. And that is, he takes out outposts and combines super, super quick. Beast Wars Prowl, 
seems a bit of a mismatch. You know, he does pretty good damage. It's alright, his AoE. But he gets through walls, but then walls aren't really an issue at lower levels with four stars. And at higher levels, we've got better bots to do it. So, if we had a choice simply between Cheeto and Beast Wars Prowl, I'd choose Cheeto. And that's relevant at the five star. We just, we've just equipped two four stars. Now, you can talk about ability 11, you can talk about G1 cores, and whatever else. But Beast Wars Prowl, listen, his ability 11 might make him crazy good. Because to be honest, Cheeto's ability 11 isn't that good. Cheeto's core isn't that good. So we don't know what's coming soon. You know, they might make a massive push again with Beast Wars. Come the Beast Wars film next year and start bringing out Ability 11 and G1 cores or Beast Wars cores for such bots. But as of right now, the way it is, uh, Cheeto definitely wins. Okay, next up, who do we think is going to win? And I think this is the big one. Out of Tiger Hawk and Swoop. Who's gonna win out of Tiger Hawk and Swoop? And I'll be honest with you, I haven't tested these guys prior. Personally, I think Tiger Hawk might win this. Yet to be seen. Tiger Hawk versus Swoop. And it says all in the chat that people are like, I think Tiger Hawk, I think Swoop. There's a big discussion going on over which one. But we've got anti air, so we're not going to do it with anti air. We're going to change the base around again back to where it was. A few more people saying Tiger Hawk. Matt Bowler, SA10. We, we can't test Swoop with SA11. It's not really fair, um, you know, in comparison. But we, we can do, but. It's a bit unfair, really, isn't it? We talk about four stars as well. I won't really take a four star to ability 11, really. Um, but yeah. We could talk, again, we could talk about G1 courts, can't we? And everything else as well. But again, that'd be a bit unfair. And we'd have to take the AT air away because if we don't, both of them are dead. So, quite a lot of high HP buildings here. Uh, we'll leave that there like that. But, uh, we can go here and then see what happens. Let's put this away just to make sure. Just to prove it. MD Prize put Super my number one favourite bot. See, uh, MIA Phillies put Tiger Hawk Sword on air, which is super useful. It, yeah, it depends how you use it. If you're trying to just clear up an area where you're just using Swoop, really, then maybe not as much. But if you're using it where your team is attacking and you're using Tiger Hawk at the same time, then yeah, definitely that is really useful. But you need other box active. No point in slowing them down if they're not trying to do damage. That makes sense. If you're attacking structures or defenses or whatever and they're not trying to do damage then you slow them down but they're doing zero anyway if that makes sense but yeah but yeah it is quite useful but yeah let's go tiger hawk and swoop let's go tiger hawk there and swoop there and let's see both maxed out at 10 Ooh, oh, oh. That's, that's close. That is close. I would not like to call that. Ooh. Tiger Hop might just pip it. It is a bit higher cost. Both hitting the same. Both pretty much hitting the same damage. I think it needs one more test. I don't think I don't think we can sort of call it from that, can we? I think it needs one more test individually. Let's go again. Let's get some another high HP building in there. So let's try and put them right on there. ND Prime's put super ability with Otter's primal ability is great. Yeah. 
Does it actually work? Have you actually tried it? I tried that a while ago and I thought it worked, but then someone told me it didn't, but I'm pretty sure it does work, but I could be wrong. Let's do one at a time. Let's see. So we'll put Tiger Heart down first. Let's see what he does on all these structures. Let's see. There's one ability. Let's use another one. Let's see. So we've done the middle. Then we start on the left or right. Let's see what we can take out. Yes, yeah, Tiger Hawk is a bit more costly. Only slightly though, but. Why is he hitting that? That's no way near the radius. I don't know why he's done that. Well, we do have a hell of rare, I suppose, so. But why has he not hit that? That's a bit weird. But yeah, listen. So I took out all the structures on this side here. Took a bit of Spider Mine out. We've almost done this. Let's have a go with Swoop now. Let's see what Swoop's in the same situation. And let's now try Swoop in the same situation. And this could be why everyone's sort of like. Arguing the case either way, because they probably do this. It'd be interesting to do the same. Yeah, Vincent's just put back Ultra Magnus as well. Yeah, I'm the same. I was a bit surprised. Uh, the balancing didn't work. The improvements didn't work. So it was quite. Also, what Phil's put, uh, once you destroy the targets inside, they get really random. Good to know. I don't really use super anymore. I used to use this guy a lot. I mean, every single war battle. And then... Um, I, I stopped doing my cleanup crew, basically. So, Swoop's actually done less damage there, I think, because this building was gone with Tiger Hawk. And he's got rid of. Ooh, I wouldn't like to call it. It's pretty even. It, cause I think he did more central damage on his first round. But then, after his second one, he's pretty much done the same. Ooh, I wouldn't like to call it. I'm trying to get a clear winner out of this, but it's close. So close. And Grand Transport, but Tiger Hawk has a cool sound effect. Oh, well, that means he's better then. <laughs> Just because he's got a cool sound effect. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Let's try something different. Let's get rid of any, any low HP buildings out of the way so there's nothing else to affect it. Get rid of all this out of the way. Nothing like that. Take it all. Both the same now. If I go around that way there. Yep. So I'm thinking if we start on the cannon and go round like that, we're not gonna. Uh... Yeah. Hard effects. Yeah, but it's a bit unfair if you use hard effects. Then what happens with hard effects? Because it has self healing and things like that. You've got to take time into consideration and things like that as well. So the less effects, the better. The less things they have on them, the better it is. The more. Uh, better test is more fair test. One shall stand, one. Let's try again. Let's try again. Put Tiger Hawk there. Put Swoop there. We'll put Tiger Hawk on the cannon. Put Swoop on the cannon. I 
It's hard to judge. I'd probably call it a draw in terms of damage done. I probably would. Oh, that's a difficult one. That's been the hardest test. Out of the two, without a doubt. There's no clear winner. But then if we start looking into abilities, things like that, so... We start looking at... Um, Tiger Hawk. So we've got 12,000 health uh, and 700 DPS. And don't forget, he also has that he slows enemies as well. So... 719 and 12k and then swoop has got if you can find him pretty much the same 1.9 speed yeah so if I had a choice between leveling swoop or tiger hawk from the start Probably choose Tiger Hawk. But then, do you take, I say, 11 into consideration and his G1 core? Could be quite difficult. But right now, if I was a new player, am I going to get G1 core? Am I going to be concerned with SA11? Probably not. So, if I was a new player, leveling from scratch, I'd probably choose Tiger Hawk. I know a lot of players will say, like, listen, you've got. Ability 11 and G1. I understand that for experienced players who've thank already you. got swoop, they understand that. Um, but yeah. But thank you, Candyman, for subscribing as well. Really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, out of the two as a phone newbie, I choose Tiger Hawk. For an experienced player, I'd probably choose Swoop. Especially if we've got his G1 and Ability 11 ready to go. So there's a four star. Do you give Ability 11 to four stars? But yeah, ultimately, guys. For new players, Tiger Hawk. For old players, I'd probably stick with Swoop for that simple reason. It doesn't give enough of an advantage without uh, than Tiger Hawk does. You know, we don't want to level a new bot from scratch. So, yeah, Tiger Hawk's pretty good. All right, next up, next on the test, Storm Clash and Jetfire. So, Jetfire does 7828 damage with a maxed uh, EOG metal 7828 storm clash however does can find him oh, that's why what's going on here <laughs> storm clash does 7455 and sets target on fire for an extra 1,065. So does uh, 8,510 over 5 seconds. So, let's give him a go. So who would you guys rather have? A 5 star Jetfire or a 5 star Storm Clash? Big question. Oh, sneeze again. Apologies. So, pretty easy comparison in terms of the two. Jetfire, take the cannon out. Storm Clash, take the cannon out. Both take it out. Both very similar. Very, very similar in damage. So, out of the two, there's not much in it really to sort of separate them. But, the big thing for me is the burn. It depends what you're hitting. So, at low levels in the game, then there's no healing, there's no healing billboards and things like that. So, Jetfire, pretty much usually regardless of a healing billboard, well, unless you're unlucky, unless you, unless you time it wrong. He'll still hit his damage regardless. Storm Clash, however, depends on that burn sometimes one shot. And it can sort of get you stuck a bit. So, but yeah, if I was a new player and I wanted to level Jetfire or Storm Clash, I'd probably go with Storm Clash. If I was looking for a, 
a Pram League Warbot. Well then, I'd probably go with Jetfire. Because guaranteed damage. You know, you're, you're not looking for build bots. You're not looking at healing. Because instant damage. Yes, you can say that Jetfire's got his core, ability level, and things like that. If you would give it to a four star, I don't know. But judging off just, you know, again, we don't know what's coming. There could be something for Storm Clash. There could be a G1 core, whatever it is, for Storm Clash. We just don't know. We don't know what's coming on the horizon. But right now, we have to make the judgment on right now. On what we've got. And for me, for new players, I'd definitely go Storm Clash. Because the chances of you getting that, I don't know if you're going to spend or not. The chances of getting that G1, um, you know, it's, uh, it's not... It's not guaranteed, is it? It's not guaranteed. So, bots put the storm clash is basically a four and a half star already. He is very good. He is very good. In the current effects, not very good. If you might have self heal on defenses and things like that, I wouldn't be too keen on storm clash. I'd rather use jet fire. If it was a five star storm clash in the game right now, a five star jet fire in Prime League hard. I would choose Jetfire. But as a new player coming through the game where there's not any healing build bots so you get in later HQs, I'd choose Storm Clash. And I think that's a big important factor as well. That it's not just now and what level we're at now. You've also got to think of what level the other players are at and you know and what stumbling blocks or what hurdles they've got to overcome. That's the big one. But yeah. Cool. Okay, let's get back onto my account and then see how we're going. So I said earlier we'd talk about sort of where I've come from in the game and how I got to where I am now and things like that. And yeah, it's, it's not a long story, but yeah, I started the game as I spoke to about. Well, I got some messages off friends while I was in, in work saying there's a new Transformers game out. So we played Transformers Legends and Battle Tactics, love them games. Got a message saying there's a new Transformers game out. Go and check it out. We're all starting an alliance. Cool. Okay, will do. <clears throat> so, downloaded the game as a con. As I've said many a time, downloaded it as a con. Started playing it. And then, being the noob, you know, I, I messaged him saying, uh, Right, I'll join you guys. What's your alliance called? Uh, I think they're called TF Legends. Hence why we've got uh, the alliance uh, within TF of TF Legends. It comes from that. Okay, I'll come and join you. Rest your back. Can't find it. Can't find it anywhere. Well, that's a bit weird. Why are you spelling it? Well, TF Legends. Is there space? No. Yeah, we're having space. TF space Legends. Nope. Can't find it. Couldn't work it out. And then someone said, Well, you do realise... Are you an Autobot? I was like, No, I've chosen Decepticon. Oh, yeah. If you're Decepticon, you can't join us. What? Yeah, yeah. Decepticons play Decepticons. Autobots with Autobots. You need to be an Autobot. I was like, Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah. I had to... Quit my con account and become an Autobot. So yeah, became an Autobot. Went through the ranks, went through the game. A couple of mergers that happened. And then uh, it comes to a point where I was very war-focused. The events were decent. But I worked a lot of weekends and they were hard. And they were getting bigger and bigger. And I said, listen guys, uh, you know, I've got some good bots and good level. But I'm struggling to keep up with you guys in events. I don't want to hold you guys back. So I'm going to try and set up a new alliance. Which is for people that struggle maybe to level their bots at weekend. Uh, but can power level, but you know, you don't do as many points, maybe. Uh, but ultimately, wars are very important. And uh, I said it was a bad idea at the time, so it's not a very good idea. Went with it anyway, didn't really work out, I'll be honest with you. And got offered a place in Aussie Alliance. So, for those people that know me and know that, uh, I get a lot of uh, jokes about being Australian. Uh, this is the sort of time where I got into base building a lot more into the mechanics of the game and started really learning the game and you know how things work and then uh aussie alliance joined one and i felt a bit a bit funny joining one they were, they were the massive competition coming to tf and i thought i don't mind going to aussie alliance but tf and one were you know the two main alliances along with scorched so um oh as they were called back then synergy and who's the other con alliance? Synergy and someone will tell me in chat. I can't remember now. Well, yeah, there was two con alliances, two big con alliances. And so, 
Uh, okay, back to TF. I went to a lower uh, alliance, basically. And, um, yeah, I still played the events, met some cool guys, and that was uh, TF Real Steel. So, met a lot of cool guys in there, basically. Uh, my cousin joined, he was playing the game, uh, got him in, and sort of helped him out, helped the alliance out, being quite a high-level player. Prior to that, um, I was all of a sudden warring in Gold League. Um, was okay there uh, for a while, but started to get itchy feet, wanted to progress. <clears throat> so progressed up to um, up to um, back up to Legends, which was tier two of TF. And yes, Stay Puffs put mass. Yes, it was mass. Yes, synergy and mass back then. Yeah, long time ago, long time ago. And around this time, I was watching the likes of Oasis, one of the YouTubers. Uh, he's still got videos out there now. Uh, Bearded Ghost, uh, obviously JT, um, you know, people like that. And Oasis did a video once where Synergy, I'm sure it was, no, Mass, I'm pretty sure it was at Mass, um, they faced uh, TF Legends, I think it was. And um, he attacked my base uh, in a video and said how good it was and well thought out. I was quite proud. I was like, yeah, that's my design. I made that design. And he's found it quite difficult. He beat it, don't get me wrong. But he found it quite difficult. And he said, like my design, how I thought it out. I was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, pretty good at this game, you know. You know, feather in the cap and all that. And, um, yeah, stayed there for a while. Uh, did quite well. And then, um, when, I think I went back down to TF Steel for a while as well. Cause I cause, not because I was struggling, but I was struggling for time in my career. So, as I was down there, I was trying to give advice on base design and on tactics and things like that. And someone asked me about base design. So, I was like, right, well, back in the day, it was so don't put your beam lasers and uh, launchers within jazz range. Because jazz was a huge bot back then. Um, don't cut your defenses up too much. Obviously, HQ at the back. Make sure you utilize your walls to slow bots down and... Um, don't make sure you can't rush it because you know that was the big thing prime rush and um putting low hp buildings out to the side so if prime rushed them the rush failed because back then it didn't carry on so all these little things tips and i was trying to help people out and they make a design and then they show me a screenshot i'd be like no that's not that's not quite right this is this is how you do it blah blah don't clump your outposts together that shouldn't be there that that they go away they send me a screenshot yeah, that's not quite right. Oh, right. No. And I was trying to explain this. And I couldn't explain to people. I was like, no, that, that's still not right. And I, I was kind of getting a bit frustrated. I was like, no, that's not what I said to do. No, move that there. Move that over a bit. Change this, change that. And it still wasn't right. So I'm like, how am I going to get this message across? I thought, right, I'll do a video explaining this is what you do. Blah, 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 blah. This is, what, this is how you do base design, basically. And these are the things you've got to look out for. Made the video. Try post it in line. Too big. Try post it in Discord. Too big. Try sending it through email. Too big. How, how am I going to show this video to people that, you know, that can, you know, want to know how to do base design, the important factors? I know. I'll create a YouTube channel and I'll put it on there and just form the link. That's probably the best way. So set up a YouTube channel. So my in game name was Sunstreaker7. My name that everyone knows me by is Wazza. So, prior to Sunstreaker, so I had Sunstreaker 82. That was my IGN in TFL. Uh, my my IGN in uh, Battle Tactics was Sunstreaker 82. So, my favourite number is 7. So, when I started Transformers Earth Wars, I just called it Sunstreaker 7. It was, I just wanted, so back in TFL, I was called Wazza 82. And everyone else had Transformer names. So I always changed it to a Transformer, but everyone had Ultra Magnus and everyone had Oxus Prime and Omega Supreme and all the cool ones. I was like, well, what's a bot that everyone knows that not everyone's got? So I chose Sunstreaker. So when I set up the YouTube channel, YouTube channel, I thought I'll call it my in-game name and my um, actual name. Sunstreaker was a. And that is literally how the YouTube channel started. And then, but it wasn't a YouTube, YouTube channel then. It wasn't a YouTube channel. It was just a YouTube page that had a video that people can go and watch. And then all of a sudden, I got a few days later, I got a message off one of the guys that had been watching it. said, really like the video. Really appreciate it. Can I share it to my friend? 
yeah. I was like, why not? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he sent it to his friend. And then someone else would just... I get comments on the video. I'm like, what the hell? I got a notification on my phone about YouTube. What's going on? And so I just put something like, oh, yeah, nice video. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. I started to pick up views. And then I have people going, well, can you do a video on outpost bots? And uh, what are the best outpost bots to put in? Well, yeah, I, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did a, did a, did a video on outpost bots in terms of base design and which ones. Ignore that. <laughs> and then it just grew from there. People started requesting more and more videos. Well, can you do a video on this? Because my friend's not sure about this. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I could do that. And got more and more and more requests. And as the requests come in, I got, I wouldn't say famous, but got more well-known from people. And started getting private messages from people saying, Hi, I was a, uh, can you do a video on this? Really like it. And got more and more and more messages. And then um, I moved back up to TF Legends, I think it was. Uh, I was in PsyOps for a while. Uh, I think I did, I was in PsyOps for the Perceptor leaderboard. And when I did that leaderboard, and did all them points for Perceptor back then and realised how bad he was. Because obviously back then we didn't have playtesters and we didn't really get to know the bot beforehand. We didn't have the in-game battles, things like that. When I realised how bad he was, actually was, I was like, I'm done with this. I'm not doing these leaderboards. Because back then, if you were in Psy, you did leaderboards. That was it. We didn't stop and change people. That was it. I was like, I ain't doing this. I'm not doing these leaderboards for awful bots. And that was that. So in the meantime, dropped down from PsyOps, went to TF Legends again, sort of flicked in between. Uh, but this time was in TF Legends. And then I thought, I'm going to do some more uh, YouTube videos. But I want to do some, you know, get some help in some way. And so I think Space put a thing out saying, like, any content creators out there, let us know. So at the time, and I can see that Soldier's in the in the chat. At the time, Soldier just started coming through. He was sort of doing YouTube. Uh, NJ Hoist was quite well established. Uh, a waste to quit. JT was sort of tinkering on quitting. He quit and come back. I wasn't really playing anymore. So I thought, I could do a bit of YouTube. Yeah, I could do a bit of that and see how it goes. So I contacted Hyro and said, hey, can I um, can I join the uh, content creator program? So he went, have you got a link to your channel? I went, yeah, post a link. He said, sorry, you need uh, 1,000 subs. Oh, right. Okay, wow. 1,000. That's like, like 500, I think. 400. I was like, right, okay, 1,000 subs, okay. So we had a massive campaign of advertising my channel and doing more videos. But it was slow progress. It really was hard, guys. And that's the hardest time of being a YouTuber is when you're putting all this effort in and getting very little views. It's, it's demotivating. It's hard when you're getting very little views and very little feedback and very little, you know, subscribers. But kept building on it and did it because I enjoyed it more. I just kept building on it and building on it. Got better and better at the game. Uh, yeah, spent a bit of money on the game, not gonna lie, you know, nothing ridiculous compared to some people, but yeah, and wanted to progress, got better and better at the game, YouTube channel started to grow, as soon as I got to 1,000 subs, I just high wrote, right, I'm ready, get, get me in there, and got in there, and um, yeah, I was a YouTuber for a while, playtest came along soon afterwards, maybe six months afterwards, something like that, joined the playtest, started playtesting with a lot of a uh, the uh, top end guys, things like that, and uh, was quite happy doing that. And then, um, sort of got to know other content creators. So got to know, you know, Soldier. I think sort of was like teeting on coming back and going. Got to know Hoist better. Uh, then the likes of you know uh, Scout Grey started to come through, and other people. Uh, Trios came through, and Alpha Prime. Those sort of uh, people were all the YouTubers at the time. And uh, we got on quite well, you know, we all got on pretty well at such that time and all that. We kept ourselves to ourselves. And I found myself just, me and Alpha Prime, to be honest, we was like, we want more. We want more from Space Ape. I started pushing for more. So we got into playtest and raids came, but we we're like, we want more. Then we started getting the codes. Um, so the codes came along, but it weren't very good. We pushed to get them better. I just kept pushing and pushing. Then playtest the same and it became just natural just to push the apes just to get more more for the content creators we started getting the newsletter they started sharing our channels on their facebook page and you know we went you know 
go on and on and on and on from there. And then obviously the likes of Grind Time joined us. Uh, other and other content creators like you know le recent ones like Arrow, DJ Hart, and uh, people like that. And then uh, went around about a year ago or so. Psyops looking for players, and I swore I'd never go back to Psyops after the last experience of that perceptive leaderboard. But I was like, well, you know what? They do a bidding system now. A lot of the players that I didn't really like that were in there have gone now. So I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. And hey, what's the worst that could happen? I can still drop down again. At this point, before this, I'd actually drop down to Illicit because I was struggling a bit. And I went to Ark because TF couldn't offer me what I wanted at the time. Went to Ark, did really well, came back to Legends, went on a 35 300 streak, something like that. And then Psyops invited me to go. I was like, yeah, give it a go. Went to Psyops and yes, Twice just smashed it. Carried on that. I was quite surprised at how well I was doing. And at first I thought, this ain't going to last. I'm not going to be able to keep up with the top guys. I didn't have all the bots they had. Didn't have them as high a level as they had. But what I had was a good knowledge of the game. A good knowledge of tactics. And a good knowledge of how to get round things. And, and different things. And when people say like, oh, well, was is really lucky with his pulls. It's about playing the odds. It's about playing and looking for, really analysing your team and going, what am I missing? What do I really need? Like I said right now, is that, you know, I've got, I can take out a billboard and hack. I can take out a billboard and use C spray and use B. What I'm missing right now is something to take out billbots that isn't airborne. That's what I'm missing right now. I could use smoke screen, but that gets expensive and taking out two billbots, which I might need to do. A couple of bases over the last few, well, last week or so that's caused me issues. And so I've, I've worked out what the issue is, what I need to do, and what I need. And that's the important thing, guys. Don't go in blind. I, I've got to where I am now, not just through money or even skill. It's more knowledge. It's more knowing how things work, knowing what's dangerous, knowing how to evolve. I've evolved from... A top player to a mid-level player to a top level player again to a mid-level player because every time that I drop down to mid-level I assess my team and go right what do I need to succeed this is the current meta this is the way the game is going this is where I foresee it and I've got even better at that so I can now really judge where the game is going but you've got to obviously put that effort in beforehand to get to that stage I'm at a stage now where I can save my four stars I can save my five stars because I'm happy where I am and I can make educated decisions better. But ultimately, that's the big thing, guys. Is making educated decisions based on your team and what you need. Especially in terms of Prime League. Don't just jump in and go, Oh, I want that batch because I like that bot. Yeah, I love Swoop. I think he's brilliant. But it doesn't fit in my team. I like Impactor. But he's not going to give me much more than Laser Optimus does. So, I'm not going to go for that batch, really. Because I don't really need them. You've got to look at the batch. I want Warpath right now. But I've only got one bot from that batch. So it's a one in four chance. Do I really want to? You've got to prepare yourself for going for all four. Do I want to waste 20,000 five star shards possibly trying to get Warpath? When I go for Wheeljack, I was prepared to do that. Because I thought, even if I don't get Wheeljack, Optus Prime. So for 20,000 five star shards, I'll get Wheeljack and Optus Prime. That's pretty good. But I was lucky, which, yeah, everybody's lucky at some point, and pull Wheeljack first. Pull. Other times, I haven't been as lucky. But you've got to play the odds. You've got to make informed decisions on what's best for your team and what's best for your account. And that is how I've got to where I am now. Six and a half years. Started in beta. You know? And like I said, guys, when people sort of see my channel sometimes, and think, oh, yeah, well, Waz is a whale, and Waz doesn't know. He's not in touch with the lower teams. I'm like, I've been there. I was a lower level player. And I'm not saying right at the start of the game. I'm talking two years ago, three years ago. I was a mid to, mid to high level player. A year before that, I was a gold league player. You know, I've gone from Cybertron League to gold league. From gold league back up to Cybertron. From Cybertron to... Well, for, to, from prime league to Cybertron prime. Back up to prime at the top level of the game. You know, it can be done, guys. It's not... Yes, money does help. I'm not going to kid you. But a lot of it is in, is decisions, informed decisions, 
And that's why I did this channel. I did this channel to try and help people get the best out of the game and make good decisions that will help their accounts. And I'm hoping that I've done that. I hope that I've succeeded in doing that. But yeah, it's been a crazy six years, like I said. Play test, content creator, to the heights of the game, to the lows. It's been a massive uh, roller coaster. But I wouldn't change anything. I would, I would maybe change getting kicked out of play test. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't change anything else. You know, a lot of decisions I've made. I've made a lot of good friends along the way. A few enemies as well. But that comes with the, you know, you, you can't be a YouTuber and have an opinion without annoying some people about that opinion. Uh, listen, no one is going to agree with me. And that is fine. Some people might agree with me. And that is fine. And people might not like me. And that is fine. You know, and I'm not too fussed with that. You know, as long as I'm happy doing what I'm doing, and I, for me, a big part of that is believing what I say. I don't want to say to you guys this, and inside I'm thinking, yeah, I wouldn't want to say to you guys, buy this bundle, it's great. And inside I'm thinking, it's not that great, really, but I'm going to do that because Space Ape asked me to. I'll never do that, guys, sadly. And the day that happens is the day that I will split apart SA and go. But to fair, Dale said he'll never do that. And he agrees with that, that he wants me to be honest in my feedback. And I like Dale for that. I appreciate that. You know. But, 4K subs, 6 years, super pumped. We're going to do some giveaways in a minute, just to say a big thank you to everyone. But yeah, it's been an absolutely whirlwind over 6 years. Why, why does it feel like I've sort of quitted the game and saying goodbye to everyone? But uh, no, it has been a super cool sort of 6, six years, guys. Thoroughly enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, it's got its ups, got its downs, but uh, yeah, super, super cool. Okay, cool. I'm gonna do some random giveaways. Why not? Let's give away some codes. I'm gonna give away 10 codes. So I'm literally gonna give one. I can't not. So, ROFL Bowls, all of you watching still, I can't not. He's donated to the stream. I can't not. So, let's do some scrolling, scrolling. Close my eye. Let's do who's that. Who's that? Garrett, uh, Jan Zegers. I should know your name by now. I've known him for like 10 years. Uh, congratulations. I think I only commented once. I've just landed on his name. Well done. Let's go a bit further up to the beginning of the chat. Well done. You've won a Sunstreak Wars Stash Crystal. Who else have we got? Who's that? Uh, SG Soundwave. Congratulations. Uh, Sunstreaker was a Stash uh, Crystal coming your way. Let's have another one. Let's have a look. Who's that? Another one. Oh, that, that says silent chat. Nope. Let's go up there. Who's this? Uh, another one. To grind time. Well, yeah, grind time does talk a lot, doesn't it? Let's be honest. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> grind time, just real, but just seen your comment. I don't like you, but can't deny you make good content. All right, thanks. Hey, and Mirage Jake is in the chat. Congratulations. Yeah, we don't see a lot of Mirage Jake anymore, do we? I think he needs to come on some more. We'll do some crystal opening next week. So uh, maybe Mirage Jake can join us with a big crystal opening, maybe. Maybe even uh, my daughter as well. Be interesting. See who put the best pulls. Oh, I can see something going on there. Let's see who does the best pulls to my daughter and Jake. That'd be interesting, won't it? Oh, has Jake still got the touch? That'd be good, good, good. Uh, let's have a look. Let's scroll upwards. That's uh, three given out, I think. Let's do some more. Who's this? Uh, Esclahosset as well. Congratulations. We'll give you a code as well. Let's have a look at another one. Uh, nope, that's grind time again. You're not getting two. Who else have we got? Uh, that's grind time again. Oh, my God. Right. Let's have a go again. Uh, William Wilkinson. Congratulations. We'll give you a code. Hit me up on Discord. And then uh, who else? Victory Star Saber. Congratulations, we'll give you a code as well. I think that's five, I think, isn't it? Someone further down now. Uh, who are now here? Carnage, Mac, all right. Congratulations, we'll give you a code as well. Who else? Someone at the top. Someone near to the top who's first in the chat around. Let's have a look. That's a bit low. Let's go right up. Let's have a look. Who's this? Chris Harmon as well. Congratulations, we'll give you a Sunset Cross Stash Crystal. Someone in the middle. Someone in the middle. JP. Hit me up on Discord to give you a Sunstreaker Wars of Stars Crystal. We'll do another three. Do another three. Uh, nope, you've already got one. You got another one. Nope. Who's this? Penny Lancaster. Congratulations. Sunstreaker Wars of Stars Crystal. Who, who else? Nope, you got another one. <laughs> Just doing this randomly. Uh, Calvin, hit me up on Discord. Sunstreaker Wars of Stars Crystal. 
go right to the bottom, most recent. Nope. Mirage Jake's not getting one. Don't play the game anymore. Nope. That's cheating. Who else? Nope, you've already got one. Emma Jones, Anderson. Uh, we'll do two more. We'll do two more. Who else? Nope. You know what? I'm going to give one. That's a good point. I'm going to give one to TTV. TTV, if you find me on Discord, it's Sunstreaker Wazza on Discord. I will give you a Sunstreaker Wazza slash crystal just to help you out at the start of the game. But good luck to you. Hit me up on Discord. Make sure. Who else? Anyone else? And... Have a look. No. No grind time. I've hit uh, Matt Pauly. There you go. If you just shout your name out, guys, hit me up on Discord. I will give you a Sunstreak or a Slash Crystal. Just to celebrate. Everyone sort of be in the chat and celebrating six years of the game and 4,000 subscribers. So can we hit 5,000 by the end of the year? So don't forget, guys, if you're not subscribed already, let's hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that bell. And get subscribed to the channel. And then, last of all, let's have a look at these rewards we've been sent. So, we've got 100k spark. I don't want to claim that yet. I've got a lot of spark. So, let's claim this. What have we got? 60,000 spark, combiner spark, combat spark. That will do nicely. G Metal XP corn, 60 premium combat chips. Pretty cool. Like I said, got plenty of spark as always. 3.5 mil. We'll have to do something with that. We're a bit low on Zen. Um, because I spent it on Red Alert in a... I don't know why I did that, but I did it in a stream. A moment of madness. I don't really use Red Alert, but hey. And like I said, saving Prime Core. So we've got all the crystals that we're waiting to crack. We're waiting for that five-star batch or HQ18 on new cores or something. Uh, but yeah, we'll be opening them. We'll be opening this new uh, five-star... Uh, combat chip we get from the event this weekend. Open that on Monday, so come and check us out on Monday, guys. We're opening another combat as well, so two combat openings. And don't forget, every time we do these combat openings, we do some giveaways and give some Sunstreak One Stash crystals away, just to make it a bit more fun on your part rather than just being me. So yeah, we've got opening them on Monday, so join Monday. It'd be pretty, uh, you know, a pretty cool stream, pretty chill stream. Like I said, saving these Prime Core shards, guys. Save them now. Save them. Uh, we've got Shanix, 50k Shanix. I think we might actually pull this guy, maybe, eventually. Three, four years down the line, where I said I never would. But I'm overflowing with Shanix. So when we get to, like, 70k, I want to keep 20k in the bank. They've said that they're never going to replace him. So I might as well go and get him. Just have another five-star. So in a, few, a couple months' time... We'll probably just pull uh, Otters Prime as a new 5-star. Why not? Um, and now we've got the Horde. Are we on defense? No. Sadly not. <laughs> and combine a spark-wise, we're getting close to what I wanted. So I said I wanted about 900k. Uh, so 924k. So the idea is that I'm going to upgrade uh, Magna Boss. And then I want 600 left over. So I need 970k. And the reason I want 600k left over is for the simple reason that I want to uh, be ready for 5 star combiners. Uh, thank you, uh, Luke, for becoming a member again. Appreciate it. Don't forget, guys, that if you are a uh, Platinum member, at the end of this month, we're going to be giving away a $30 gift card. And they have said, if it gets to 10 Platinum members, be a $50 gift card. And don't forget, guys, if you are a member as well, you can... Um, private message me and book in a one-to-one -one anytime if you are a uh, platinum member. I give a bit of uh, feedback to anyone here and there. Uh, not really extensively though. If you are a platinum member, you will have my full attention for the time, wherever you want it. We can book in and I'll help you out with your war team, your base, whatever you want. Like I said, it's there guys. If you're a platinum member, I appreciate your input to the channel and your donation. So yeah, I will help you in any way I can around that. And Grind Time's put it's my turn for the gift card. I hope so. I really do, Grind Time. Grind Time's been uh, a massive support of my channel. Done donated loads of times, uh, and he's the only person that's not won it yet. <laughs> I think every single person has won it apart from Grind Time. I think someone's won it. 
Is SG Soundwave won it twice, actually, I think? Someone's won it twice. So, yeah. Um, Combat Spark-wise... Oh, God. I'm embarrassed to show it. Um, almost two and a half mil. So, whatever five-star combat we get, if it's a good one, which I doubt, uh, we'll be, um, yeah, taking that up pretty high straight away. Uh, and someone asked, what combats would I want? Um, problem is, is the ones I want, it's this guy. Maybe this guy. I have him in four star of war team. Oh, none of these. I've been pretty gutted at anyone from batch two. I've been pretty gutted. Flak would be all right. Uh, Flak would be that, the jackpot for me. Flak is the jackpot. Spoil Sport second. And then after that, you've got Lionizer and Night Stalker, which would be like, all right. Uh, top Heavy Red Heat, Sound Barrier. Be all right. Um, yeah, I'd say Flak, number one pick. Sparse Sport, number two pick. Rat Trap, number three. And then Night Stalker and Lionizer. Sound Barrier, Top Heavy, Red Heat. After that. And then I would not like Dazzle Strike. Don't want Dazzle Strike. Don't want Fire Drive. Don't want Dial. Don't want smash down. Trench foot, it'd be in that sort of lionizer and bots like that, which would get used and get all right. But literally, dial, smash down, fire drive, dazzle strike. They can get in the bin. They can go in the bin for me. They could just be left at level one. Those guys, I'd be pretty fuming at. I might actually smash something if I pull one of them guys. You want to know who I get? Tune in Monday. We'll see. Mirage Jakes, but who's the coolest combat? What? Coolest or best? The best combat for me is Top Shot. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely amazing. Love Top Shot. Uh, yeah. Definitely transformed my team. Um, coolest? I don't know. Air Razor, maybe? Rat Trap? I don't know. Hard to say which is the coolest. But yeah, Top Shot for me is the best, without a doubt. Yeah. And then someone asked, uh, well, I said earlier about uh, missions, and this is the problem we've got. So, dispatch missions. Four gunners. And two of something else. Or, five gunners. And three of something else. So, basically, I've got to take some gunners out of my team, basically, no matter what I choose, and really mess my teams up. I said they'd lowered the uh, requirements. That was 12k. Now it's 10k. So, if I want to use some low level bots. Load it by 2k, but all these bots are pretty much in team. So, imagine it in a team. And then, Clifton Jumper's not in a team. Jazz ain't in a team. Alpha Bravo's not in a team. Ooh, uh, uh. We're scraping the barrel there now, aren't we? Drift's not. Oh, we might just be able to do it, actually, I think. Beast Primal. I take it back. I think we've just about done it. Chaz might be in a team, though. <laughs> but why am I not in a team? Because uh, you're not very good. <laughs> might actually be in a team, actually. I'm pretty sure they're not in the team, any of them. It's Bravo. I'll have to double check. But you see, get the point I'm making, guys, is that even 10k might be a bit too high. Definitely 18k, whatever that one is. 18k, that ain't getting done. That is not getting done. But they said they are going to work on something where it doesn't take it out of your teams. And that's fine. I can, I can deal with that. The problem is when the bots come out of your team and then mess up all your teams. And you spend time doing them. I mean, I've set all mine up. And, um, you know... It takes time. It takes time. Let's have a look. Look at the four stars. Let's have a look at them bots are in there. I know Mirage ain't, that's for sure. Oh, I don't think they are. Sunstrig's in there. I thought it was. 
Yep, Jazz is in there. Yep, he is. Is Alpha Bravo in there? Nope. Alpha Bravo's not in there. That's not a team, that's my uh, Zen. So yeah, that's good to go. Willie Walker said, said the last one was a uh, glitch, last combat board. Yeah, I've got a five star glitch. Pretty good. Nope, where am I going? Missions. Let's do it. This is pretty good, the fact that, you know, I'll be going to bed soon and these bots will uh, come back by the time I wake up and be uh, refreshed and ready to go. But don't worry, Jake. Once he's going to lab more and more, they'll come out really good. Penn Lancaster keeps a spreadsheet of the teams. Oh, I don't get that far. And the reason I don't have these guys in my team is because they're awful. <laughs> what do I need? I need... I need 2007 power. 2007, that's all I need. 2007. Oh, I can't, not can I? Oh, look at that. that that's got to be, on it? It's got to be. It's got to be. Done. Cool. Back in 12 hours. And that is it for this week's stream, guys. So, yeah, a bit over the normal time. But, yeah, I appreciate everyone for tuning in. It's been uh, really cool to celebrate uh, six years with you guys. And, uh, like I said, loads more to come this year. Can't wait for HQ18. Can't wait for the war improvements. A way to level up our bots. Maybe five star titans. Maybe five star combiners. Loads to come. And as always, we'll be following it. We'll be on the button as soon as it gets released with the important info. And, you know, giving you guys a good verdict on whether it's good content, bad content, how to use it. Should you use it? Is it worth investing in? But yeah, can't wait. Come and check me out Monday. We'll be doing a big crystal uh, opening and a giveaway as always. It's a pretty fun stream. And uh, yeah, I'd be interested to see uh, and hear how you did in the event as well over the weekend. So join me on Monday. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, peace out, guys. <laughs>